I'm not going to prepare for Father. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for all things you've done for us. Um, hope hard to be good and hope is meant to be calm. Lord, right, speak through him today and just help your message to come out through him. Amen. Amen. <coughs> okay, welcome and happy Sabbath. I'd like to pray one more time before I start. Dear God, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you that we can all come here to worship you and help um, me, Jacob, and Mariam all to be calm and help us to speak what you want us to. Be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Not so long ago, I heard a story about a man who wanted to re-roof his roof, okay? So he has all of his nails and all of his shingles, and he goes up, climbs up to his roof, and he's about ready to start, and he looks at the packaging on the shingles, and they say that to secure these shingles onto the roof, you have to have four nails per shingle to attach it. But the man, he wanted to just get done really quickly, and so he just rushed through it, and he only put three because he's trying to get down and do something else. And the next few days, there is a, a big windstorm, and it knocked down all of his shingles, and it spread them all across his yard. So by not taking his time and making it a good job, he actually created more work for himself than what he started with. Sometimes we see this all around us. People in life, they don't do things. They just do things to get them done, and they don't do their best. And in this story, they don't even do them right. I asked my dad if in his job, he sees people who just do substandard work and don't take their time to make it quality. And he said that, yeah, a lot of people don't do their best and they just do the least that they have to do to get it done. Sometimes us Christians are like this. We see people go to church and go to Sabbath school and they even return their tithe and offering but they never get involved in the ministry. People even live completely different lives during the week, but because they come to church on Saturday, they think that they're living the life that God wants them to, and they're obeying His commands. Um, then there's these people that they come to church to get spiritually fed, but they're not willing to go out and spiritually feed others. They go to church to receive a blessing for themselves, but they do nothing to tell others God's news for us all. So often we forget the command of Jesus that says, go and make disciples of all nations. When, when we do this, God doesn't really like 10% Christians. He's not satisfied with us just doing the minimum that we have to do to get by. In Revelation 3, 15 through 16, it talks about the difference between hot and cold. It says, I know the deeds, I know your deeds, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. In this, John is talking about when we go to church and we do all these things that we're supposed to do, but we don't live our own beliefs, then we're not living what God wants us to. We need to tell others about God's love and promises. We need to live the life that God wants us to live. We may look good, we go around and talk good, and we attend all the right religious services, but to Sadly, it seems to people that reaching out to others is only a job for the paid pastors. But really, God's plan is for us to be actively serving others and showing and helping others. I'm reminded of the story of the story of Eutychus in Acts 20, 7 through 12. This young man named Eutychus was listening to Paul talk. And Paul was about to leave the next day, so he was talking to the people late in the night. And Eutychus, he was there, and he was sitting in the room, and he was sitting on the windowsill, and he, and he was listening, and he liked it, but he wasn't fully there. He fell asleep, and he actually fell out of the windowsill and died. Can you imagine that? Listening to a sermon, and then the next thing you know, you're falling to your death? Well, Paul didn't really like that he had fallen asleep during the sermon, so he went down, he threw his arms on him, and he rose him back to life. He raised him back to life. Then he brought him back up to the room and continued to preach to him until the break of dawn. Um, this is a good example of a person who's not fully committed to listening to God's call and following it. He thought he was safe, that he was doing a good thing, but he wasn't. He was there, but he really wasn't there. He thought that he was doing what God wanted him to, and he was listening, but he really wasn't going out and um, serving others. 
In this story, not being fully committed to God's call actually killed him. But the beautiful thing is here is that Paul, Paul, through the power of Christ, was able to resurrect Eutychus and bring him back to life. We, in the lukewarm state, need to be resurrected spiritually. We need to come to life and reach out to help others know Jesus. Unfortunately, the story of Eutychus describes a lot of us Christians today. God wants us to be fully committed to, our, to his plan. One such person who stands out as fully committed is the cupbearer of King Artaxerxes, Nehemiah. He lived in captivity in Susa, and he served the king as his cupbearer. Now, his job was to take a bolt for the king. He tasted the king's wine before he drank it to make sure it wasn't poisoned. The king had a lot of trust in Nehemiah. If Nehemiah had gone out and fake drank his wine, but it was poisoned, and then the king drank it and died, then Nehemiah would be in huge trouble. So the king knew him pretty well because they worked together every day, and he respected him. One day, one of Nehemiah's friends from Judah came to Susa, where Nehemiah was living. And Nehemiah asked his friends how the state of Jerusalem was, his home city, where his ancestors grew up. And his friends, say that it was, his friends said that it was terrible. Jerusalem's walls were broken down and all the, um, all the walls were burned. And anybody who had survived the exile and gone back were in disgrace. And there was no, they were all scattered around. They weren't doing anything. And so Nehemiah was really sad that this was his pride that was broken. So he prayed and wept. He prayed to God and he reminded him of his promise that God had given to Moses that said, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if your people are in the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them together. Nehemiah then asked him if God would grant his wish to go and help rebuild the walls. When we are fully committed to God, he can use us to do great and wonderful things for him. Nehemiah's life was pretty good. He had a great job, a good community, and he had a, he, he worked in a safe environment. He could have really easily just said when he heard this bad news that, oh, I don't need to worry about that. It's not my job. Someone else will do it. I can just keep on living my life. But he didn't. And when God lays a burden on our hearts, we need to answer the call. God has a purpose for me, you, and for all of his people. I want to end with the invitation of Jesus to his disciples. Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men.